IIIF APIs, a deep dive, a quick deep dive. A very quick deep dive. And when Glenn assigned that title, I thought, surely Yale will have an image of someone diving. And really, it's only that. <laughs> so I'm going to try to not make you feel like a, a fish has been biting your head uh, during this talk. Uh, how many people have looked at the specifications in detail, in any level of detail? Raise your hand just so I know what the audience is like. Oh, good number. OK. Good, good, good. Um, so there are four IIIF APIs that are out of beta. Um, image, presentation, search, search within, uh, as we have been calling it, um, to search within an object, and authentication. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll really be giving uh, the main introduction to the image API, some on the presentation, and just very little bit about search and authentication. Um, so the image API allows you to, for a given image, to request a, a set of transformations to be applied to that image. Um, this, this example is in the specifications and has been there at, like almost as long as that uh, uh, paper fragment that uh, Tom uh, showed of, about the origin of IIIF. I don't know where this came from, but it, it, we just keep carrying it on. Um, and, and what it shows you here is the idea that you can have a, a source image. Um, you can request uh, a build a URL that requests, for instance, a, a region of interest within it, uh, scales it, rotates it, and so forth, uh, changes it to grayscale even. Um, all, all driven by how you construct a URL. And there's, there's a pattern here at the bottom of the screen that shows you a URL with slots in it where you would plug in values that control and guide the transformations. Um, so just to kind of zoom in a bit on the particular area of, of that URL that we'd be interested in, um, there, that's at the top. First of all, it begins with an identifier. So there's there's some identifier. The image, the IIIF image uh, API endpoint or server has to know which source image it's dealing with, and that identifier uh, is, is the way to do that. And then the other uh, uh, segments are, as you see there, region size, rotation quality, and format. Um, now, what you'll see in those slots can, it varies, and, and we'll walk through them one at a time, but you might see a set of numbers, or you might see some text strings like full or max or square um, that have uh, uh, important meanings to the, to the, in, within the API. Um, and what I'm going to use is not that uh, uh, Chamber of Horrors uh, diving bell, but I'm going to, as the example image, I'm going to use the right-hand uh, Van Gogh self-portrait from the National Gallery of Art in the U.S., um, so let's start off with region. So we want to request uh, a region as the, as the, the uh, basis for the subsequent transformations that we're going to describe in the URL. Now, you might want the full image, and that is uh, requested by the string full. Um, you might want to identify a region of interest, and you would do that by providing a bounding box. And so that, that, uh, those four numbers you see, the first two are the x, y coordinates of the top left of that region of interest, and then the next two are the width and height. You can also specify those as a percentage value. And then finally, uh, you can request a square. Uh, you can request that the, the server provide you with a square uh, region of the image. Um, and this is useful for uh, generating thumbnails that need to fit into a particular layout. So let's look at those. But first of all, if you ask for full on an image that's maybe 25,000 pixels across, you're going to get a lot of pixels back if the server even decides to honor that request. And we'll, we'll talk about that a bit more later. But generally, full means full. This is a, the full image of um, the Van Gogh self-portrait. Now, if I want to request a region of interest, I would use this uh, format. Again, I'm identifying the top left corner of that orange box, and then I'm, the second two values are providing the width and the height. So you can see this image, that region of interest is 13,000 pixels high. So again, a lot of, a lot of pixels in the underlying source image uh, in, in this uh, image from the National Gallery. I can also request a square. So if you, you'll notice what's happened to this image uh, from there to there, so we've lost some from the top and we've lost some from the bottom. So the, the image server has given us a square by cropping uh, top and bottom of that uh, painting. Now, why would we want to request a square? Well, if we have a layout where, we, like a thumbnail grid um, or a, other sort of results list where we need to fit a particular layout. That's great, we can do it. You'll see though, uh, in the third image also, it's been cropped top of the head uh, of, of the uh, subject in the portrait. Um, 
curators don't like that always, so you know, this, this isn't always the ideal way to go about doing this. I'll talk about another approach uh, in, a, in a moment. So that's how you request the, the region, um, but now we want to transform that by scaling in some way. So in uh, version two, uh, we have a deprecated uh, option to request full. So you can say, give me the full image at the full size. Give me all of the pixels back. This could be a problem with an extremely large image. There are reasons why you might not want your server you know, struggling with those requests. So there's actually a capability in, uh, in the API to uh, specify limits. You can define uh, the, the maximum size or maximum number of pixels that your server will return in a request. And if the server is larger than that, your server, uh, the request is larger than that, um, you can return an error from your server. Um, so full size is deprecated because it, it might result in an error quite legitimately where, where the server says, I'm not gonna give you that much uh, content back. So we've also had max, which will be the preferred way to do this. Give me the full image at max size. Give me it back uh, as large as you can within the constraints that are uh, operative on the, on the server. You can also proportionally scale the, the image to height or width. Um, and then there's a, a, a peculiar uh, looking uh, version of this uh, with the exclamation point, which is basically saying fit the image within that uh, bounding box. So I want the image back, I don't want, the, I don't want it distorted, um, I just want the image that fits within that box. And again, very useful for layouts um, as you're trying to render search results. Another option is to request a distorted transformation. Again, curators don't really like that, so you know, I, I haven't seen that happening uh, that often on, on any of our sites at Yale. Uh, and you can also scale by a percentage. I'll note that there's a, uh, I'm talking about version two of the APIs here. In version three, there's a change uh, regarding upscaling. If you want the server to actually upscale a region, uh, you have to uh, make a specific request with the caret in front of one of these forms. Um, and uh, the thinking there is that often we, we don't want to uh, upscale because you end up with blurry pixelated images coming, so we'd like to know that, 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 that we've requested that explicitly, and so that's why we have, we're going to have a separate form in version three of the APIs. Um, so some simple examples here of just scaling to horizontal or uh, uh, vertical size, proportional scaling. And again, uh, the format uh, on the left is, is requesting an image that fits within a 512 by 512 square. So you can see there's some uh, space on either side. The image is 512 high, but it's not 512 wide. Um, so that's one option that's really handy for layouts. And on the right, you can see the square request uh, that does crop it, but it fits, fits the square exactly. Now, the last three uh, slots in that URL are rotation, quality, and format. So you can rotate the image. You can also mirror the image using that exclamation mark uh, format. Um, and you can request uh, grayscale, bitonal, color explicitly, or you can just request the default, saying basically give me the default version of the image that you have. It's the, the, the image with the most color information available. Um, so to give you an example, not from the Van Gogh painting, but from something at the Center for British Art, this is a, a, a photograph of a back of a painting. I never knew those were interesting until I worked at a museum, but they are. Um, you can see that the, uh, the uh, label there is, was put on at an angle, and then it's been rotated back uh, through 270 degrees so that it's at a, a legible, uh, correct angle. And a final example, just to show you uh, conversion to grayscale, rotation, uh, mirroring, all in one, to, to flip around this painting upside down, make it look like it's a reflection, in, um, and then along with the grayscale transformation. So those are all things you can do with the, with the uh, image API uh, by just manipulating the URL and putting different values in the different spaces in the, in the API. There's another piece of this to talk about, which is the info.json. Um, this is technically called the image information document, but pretty much everyone just says check the info.json for, for this data. Um, and this is uh, available for each image, and it tells you uh, things about the, the uh, image, such as the height and width, but it also gives you the API version, uh, compliance level, um, and 
provides useful information for viewers that are uh, using the, the image API for uh, uh, as a, basically a tile server to give you a pan zoom experience. So viewers like Open Sea Dragon will request this and figure out you know, what, what the optimal tile sizes are and so forth to be requesting from the server. Um, so this is uh, the last piece of the image API. So moving on, uh, I'll talk about a little bit more briefly the presentation API. Um, the presentation API has the notion of a manifest, which represents your digital object. Um, the manifest can contain a uh, label, summary, text meta textual metadata, um, uh, the sequence of canvases, so the, the, the individual views of the object, um, rights information, your institutional logo, and so forth. And another key concept is uh, annotation. So there's this, the idea that you have a sequence of canvases, which are sort of blank, uh, spaces that you annotate your content onto. And so when you look at a manuscript in a IIIF viewer, what you're seeing is for each page is a, is a canvas object that has an image annotated onto the entirety of the canvas. Annotation is accomplished using the, uh, the open annotation data model in version two or the W3C web annotation model in uh, IIIF APIs version three. So a canvas basically has a, a minimal canvas would have a label and uh, a width and a height, or an aspect ratio, um, and some number of images associated with it. And then they would be associated by an annotation object. This annotation object is, is basically tying an image API service or, to the canvas. And you can see in the last line, it's indicating that this, this annotation is on a particular canvas that we just looked at before. And the manifest can also accommodate, uh, in addition to sequences of canvases, uh, ranges which give you uh, a sort of logical navigation structure, hierarchical navigation structure that lets you navigate through the, the content. So if you're looking at a manuscript like this, on the left you have your ranges, your, your, your uh, hierarchical navigation. Along the bottom you have a sequence of canvases each with one image annotated onto the canvas, and up above you have two canvases uh, face, facing each other um, to show the opening of the manuscript, each with an image. So that's the presentation API in a nutshell, and that was a very, very quick uh, overview of it. Um, but we'll move on to the search API. It's one minute left, okay. Um, the search API enables search uh, within a triple IF uh, object. So if you've associated uh, you know, thousands and thousands of annotations with pages of a newspaper and those annotations contain uh, OCR text, uh, the search API would allow you to search through them. Um, so here's an example from National Library of Wales. You can see the search hits are highlighted on the left, and there's a search panel on the right, which is also showing you the, the results. Um, here's another example from uh, showing you the Universal Viewer. Uh, search, the search API supports that autocomplete that you see happening at the bottom as they're typing, and then search results being, being returned in the interface. And the final piece is the authentication uh, API. Um, what this does not do is replace your single sign-on server or try to do something like that. What it really uh, provides is a pattern for directing users to your authentication system um, and then allowing them to uh, have access to the content that they're authorized to by, by your systems. Um, so there are four main patterns that we support. One is a, a login pattern, so directing the user to your single sign-on, and then they would come back and be in the IIIF environment and uh, have credentials that you would then use to authorize their request for images. Another is a click-through pattern, um, so many institutions have content that's available, but only after the user clicks on some license. Um, they're not actually logging in, they're just clicking license terms. Kiosk pattern is important, again, if you think of a kiosk in a museum um, that's going to be running you know, uh, for months during an exhibition, the guards are not gonna come in and log in every morning. You need that kiosk to be able to authenticate itself whenever it's rebooted or the, the you know, uh, power goes out at night, something like that. Um, and the kiosk pattern allows that. And then finally, we have a, a fourth pattern that just accounts for uh, out-of-band 
mechanism. So you might have an enclosing web application that's already authenticated and you can pass credentials that you've already, uh, you've already received from an, another source uh, to your IIIF uh, image server. So those are the four patterns that we support in the auth API and we think those cover uh, a really wide range. Um, so here's a final example uh, from the welcome of archival material. It has a click-through license. You would simply click that and move through. All of that text is being provided through the uh, IIIF auth API pattern. So that was really fast. I hope, uh, I hope you don't feel like your head's being bitten by a fish. Uh, and uh, I, hope, I hope that gave you a quick introduction to the basics of this. Thank you.